Good morning. My name is Alyssa. It might not be morning where you are, so greetings, salutations to you wherever you're greeting time along your day or your week. Um, I'm hoping the sun will come out here in a moment so it'll be a little easier to see me. Um, but this is a vinyasa practice. This class is particularly offered to the posers community, um, but the good news is the posers community is open to anyone who wants to practice yoga. So if you're interested in using this video, please feel free to use it however you'd like to, which might mean that you just do 10 minutes of it or you stop it halfway through and do something else uh, and then turn it back on and finish it. It might mean um, that you do it with friends. It might mean that you modify the postures. Maybe you just sit and meditate. Um, like you might in a lead class that you didn't want to practice asana in and listen to the sounds of the breath, etc. Um, it's your tool to use. So the intent is to make yoga accessible, to give you access to yoga. Uh, for the rest of this month, I'm continuing to... Um, send all proceeds from these classes to the Minnesota Healing Justice Network. Um, I've talked about them in previous videos and the link to their website is here. They're a group of femme um, and queer black and brown doulas and midwives and now extending into other wellness professionals. Um, who seek to both provide education and adequate pay for black and brown healers in the Minnesota area, and also who seek to create accessibility to those communities um, with healers who look and represent uh, like and as them. And so that's very powerful work, as a lot of us know in yoga. There's something about being able to identify with our own healers and also being able to have access to healing methods of all kinds. And how we utilize healing on an individual level, I think, says a lot about how we can utilize healing on a community level on a national level, on a global level, etc. And so consider your own healing as a radical act of revolution. But remember, um, if you have it, you sort of always have to turn behind with your hand and make sure that there's not someone behind you who doesn't have access, if that makes sense. There's not someone in front of you who doesn't have access. There's not somebody uh, next to you who doesn't have access. So consider um, how your liberation practice is wrapped up in everyone's liberation practice. And you might consider the power of doing individual work uh, in a solitary way and also how that might lead you to do work more broadly in connected ways. So for class today, know that you're welcome to change any pose in any way. I have a couple of sort of dog chewed up yoga blocks with me that I'll use to demonstrate some modifications. But you're always welcome to do it the way that you'd like to do it. Your body will inherently look different than mine, different than um, the person that lives next door to you, et cetera, and so on in these postures. Poses are just tools, just tools for us to pay attention, tools for us to be with the sensations of the body and that altar space of the ritual of the practice. So be kind. Uh, what you do is not as important as how you do it and the intent of liberation, kindness, peace. All right. Uh, know that I am out on a farm in the San Juan Islands, and so sometimes the sun comes and goes. Sometimes a dog walks into shot or needs me to, you know, do something for them. So I appreciate your tolerance, your patience for the chicken noises and the giant dogs walking to the screen, etc., and so on. Um, besides that, I'll always let you know if anything has changed or anything along those lines. Otherwise, we'll begin by uniting with three rounds of the Zid Sound of Om. I offer Om as a secular chant, acknowledging the interconnection between all things, and thus our efficacy, both our humility and smallness, and our importance and uh, usefulness inside of that vast network. If Oming or chanting isn't for you, feel free to sit with us in presence instead. There are many good reasons to make that decision, including like a sleeping partner in the next room, etc., so on. The intention is really just to consider a vibration as part of our work. Close the eyes, look down at one spot on the ground in front of you. Feel free to sit up on something if it gives your hips a little softness, your knees lower down than the pelvis. Rest your hands in relative neutral and take a couple of breaths just to sit up tall and to listen. Maybe you listen with your external ear, hear for what's going on around you including perhaps the recording of this uh, yoga video. And also take some time to listen to the internal beating of your heart, the moving of your own breath, the knowledge you might have of mood or quality, of intention or self, of feeling here and now. And from this point of view of arrival, to clear and prepare the energetic channel of the body, take a big deep inhale in through your nose, and open your mouth to exhale, H-A. 
Inhale, prepare for Om. Take a long inhale in through your nose. A slow exhale out. We'll begin in a grounding posture. I suggest Balasana, the child's pose. But you're welcome to choose any posture you like. You could remain in a seat or lie on your back if this pose is not for you. Otherwise, you might bring your toes close. Your knees can be together or wide. Drape your body forward and down onto or between your thighs. You might grab a hold of an opposite hand underneath the forehead or an extra prop to catch you, especially if it feels like letting your head come down chokes off the throat or puts undue pressure in your lower spine or knees and also choose to prop yourself up on a cushion choose knees together and let your arms drape back by your side hips or maybe arms out long in front once you have arrived in your version of the pose I'm going to be here quite as long as we often are just taking a moment again to turn towards listening you might consider your observation practice your ability to pay attention to allow you to find places, ways, and experiences in which you feel interconnected, in which there is a nuance uh, of interconnection with uh, things, with people, not attachment. Right? Attachment is an idea of identity, identifying, which you might consider instead just what it means to be relational to property, to the nature of things around you, and how your purusha, your Wisdom, your spirit, your observational awareness can witness these experiences of connection. As you begin to listen for your direct experiences in the room, in the body, in the psyche, in the energy, in the mind, begin to pay attention to your natural and organic breath as it rises and falls in and out. The breath is really the primary practice of vinyasa yoga. We use the breath to move the body. And from a very pragmatic way, as you start to breathe, you might notice you might notice that you hear it or feel it in your throat or your mouth. Maybe you could also notice it in your belly, in your rib cage, in your chest, without forcing, without fighting, slowly deepening the breath, just kindly to the degree that you can allow it to do so throughout practicing. As it moves into the body, into the belly, in the back, we feel the diaphragm drop on the inhales and rise on the exhales. We feel the belly rise and fall. You might start to notice that your spine has moved a little bit. Every inhale expands and opens the front ribs, backward bending. Every exhale contracts the abdominals and the floor of the pelvis, a little bit of rounding. We sort of manipulate that action as well as the relation of out and up and down and in to give ourselves a context for our movement. So exhale the air you have in your lungs. For Ujjayi Pranayama, begin by breathing. Breathing in through your nose slowly. Fill up three dimensionally into the rib cage and the belly and softly retain it at full. And then open mouth to exhale, H A. You got it. Inhale in again through your nose. When you're ready, slowly fill your back, your in your back rib cage. Let yourself expand the breath into the body and hold it foot mostly full. Again, open your mouth to exhale, H A. Good Ujjayi Pranayama. Seal your lips and breathe in slowly through your nose. Try to slow the breath down as it enters your rib cage and your belly and your back until you feel mostly full. And then just pause it there as soft as you can. And then with lips sealed, sigh out through your nose. That same H.A. feeling, but through your nostrils. And continuing, inhaling through your nose, snoring. 
exhaling through your nose, sighing. And as you continue to breathe in this way, inhaling and exhaling in the ujjayi you form, let your next couple of inhales pull you forward and up into a tabletop shape. Next couple of exhales start to move. You might stretch out an arm or a leg. You might wobble from side to side a few times. You might shift back and forth. Sometimes it's nice to fold your hands and stretch your wrists, maybe one at a time. Always be mindful that range of motion isn't our goal. We're not trying to sort of twist the body into its nth degree. That we're still always trying to find kind range, right? Places where we can stay thriving and full of acuity. Return on the next couple of exhales uh, towards neutral tabletop, resolving any undulations or experimentations to stack your shoulders direct over your wrists and your hips direct over your knees. Think not of the top of your shoulders or the width of your hips, but the sockets of your hips, and the sockets of your armpits. And then as you press your hands down and your feet down, you might feel naturally Uddiyana Bandha, the navel drawing in and up, a seal of muscular tone. Inhale, cow pose, drop your belly, lift your chin and tailbone up. Exhale, cat pose, curl and compress. And follow your breath through these two actions. We often start this way to unite breath with movement. Movement with breath. To connect ourselves to the actions we're taking. You can go slow or fast, add or omit a breath or an action. Be mindful with your neck, let it come along for the ride. Return the round of the next three or four breaths to neutral tabletop shape. I'm going to do a little bit of movement with breath to extend the spine in an action of um, proud movement, a warrior flow, as it were. You're going to inhale your right arm forward and your left leg back off the ground reaching and exhale just to place them down. Inhale, left arm forward, right leg back when you're ready. And exhale, hand down, knee down. Follow your own breath. Switching sides. And as you continue, you might notice a desire to backbend, which you can if you like, or you can keep your stomach muscles contracted and focus on pure extension. Breathing in and out of the nose, or perhaps in through the nose and out through the mouth. The next time you're on your left arm, after that time, pause and tabletop. More turn to neutral action. Inhale, curl your toes under, lift your chin and tail. Exhale to down dog. Spin your knees and hips up and back, straightening the legs to some degree. Begin to breathe in down dog. An inversion, head below the heart. We breathe. Now the bottom of our lungs is the top. So try to breathe into your lower back, into your pelvis almost. Of course, the air only goes to your lungs. But the movement that that creates of expansion and deflation can ripple through your whole body because of your connective tissue. Spread out your hands. I like pointing my index fingers forward as opposed to my middle finger. Instead of lining up your wrist to the parallel of your mat, remember that your wrist, she ain't flat, right? She's curved. So give her a little bit of space to turn however the wrist would like to turn. But lay down your index fingers and your thumbs so that you're not rooting all of your weight down into the base of your wrist or your pinky side edge. You can always bend your knees. 
Lift your heels. And as you breathe to move here, a lot of people will stretch out the hamstrings by pedaling the knees, by bending the elbows and straightening them, by nodding the head. Eventually, we're seeking no more weight in the hands than the feet, though I really don't know anybody who quite has that experience. And that's why the heels might be um, working towards the earth over time, but they don't ever have to touch the ground. Sometimes bending your knees and keeping them bent in down dogs for a while or at the beginning of practice or at the beginning for a few years might give you a little space to extend your spine. Draw your belly in, flare your tail out, and relax your neck so your shoulders extending presses your hands into the ground as opposed to moving the shoulder blades to the ears. Good. Inhale out into a plank, upward push-up position, and right away, exhale your knees to the mat for plank on the knees. Unlike tabletop, the hips more long as opposed to at 90-degree bend. Take an inhale. On your exhale, bend your elbows, lower your chest and chin down, or come all the way down to your mat. Tops of your feet down. Inhale to cobra pose. Lift your chest up. Keep your feet pressing down. And exhale, bring your chin or forehead down. Let's keep breathing to repeat. Your hands might be more back or tented up. Inhaling to curl the spine up and exhaling to put it down one or two more times in your own breath. When you're ready, curl your toes under, press your knees and palms down. Inhale through plank on the knees. Exhale back to downward facing dog pose. Inhale your right leg up, one foot at dog. This can also be done from tabletop position or with the forearms down if the wrists get uh, cranky. You can exhale to open your hip and bend your knee into that scorpion shape. Move your leg around a little bit, wind through your hip, and always keep your standing knee bent. Try to relax your neck and maintain the rest of the structure of your down dog to the best of your attention and your ability. Inhale, straighten and reach your right leg high and long. And on your exhale, step your right foot forward between your hands. You can grab it and pull it up. Tent to the fingertips, or you can bring your hands up on blocks in any setting. Inhale, cow lunge, dip your back knee, lift your heart up. Ooh, I'm going to use that block. And exhale, cat lunge, straightening both legs to some degree, round your spine, tuck your chin. Inhale, cow lunge, lift your heart up, chest up. Exhale, cat lunge, press the earth away. And just one more time like this, inhaling. And exhaling. Inhale, cow lunge. And exhale, step back to plank pose, upward push-up position. Good. Inhale, shift forward with the knees or not. Exhale, lower all the way down. Try to get your ribs to hit right before the front of your pelvis. Tops of your feet down. Inhale, cobra, bhujangasana. Exhale to bring your upper body down and curl your toes. Inhale through plank or hands and knees position. Exhale to downward dog. Inhale, left leg up, one foot a dog. Exhale, scorpion, open the hip and bend the knee. And again, take some breath. Make sure you have enough attention for your breathing. I think it really takes like years of practice to be able to fully ujjayi breathe while practicing. So much of our cultural affect is to hold the breath, to concentrate or pay attention, is to silence our sense of self inside of our ability to be with other things. If you can stay connected, alive, breathing deeply like you would with trusted friends. Inhale, straighten and reach to the left leg and exhale, low lunge, grab it and pull it up. And again, you can tent up to your fingertips or use blocks under your hands. You can even bring your hands up to your front knee and stay a little bit smaller in range of motion. Inhale, cow lunge, dip your back knee, lift your heart up. Exhale, cat lunge, straightening both legs. They don't have to be all the way straight today. Inhale, cow lunge or any day. Exhale, cat lunge. Let's not perform the straightness of the knee. Inhale, cow lunge. Instead, let it be as bent as it needs to be. Exhale, cat lunge. Inhale, cow lunge. Exhale to plank, upward push-up position. One of the other two options, always on the table that you just did. Inhale to plank. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana. Bend your elbows halfway down. 
ish. Inhale, upward dog. Lift the tops of your feet down and kick them into the ground to puff your chest out and perhaps gaze up if the neck allows. Exhale, down dog. Spin your tail high. Flip over your feet so your heels can hang towards the earth. Breathe into your back ribs and side ribs. Inhaling. Open mouth. Exhale, H A. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth, H-A. Inhale through your nose, Ujjayi. Exhale through your nose, Ujjayi. Inhale, bend your knees, lift your gaze. Exhale to the top of your mat. Once you're there, I like to widen my feet. You can do it how you like, six, eight inches, maybe eight, ten. Right? If you have strong legs, bend your knees, hang your head. Lip your palms up or grab for opposite elbow with opposite hand. Interweave the fingers behind you with the tail if you wish. Just stretch the shoulders and breathe. Notice what the body has to say to you, this vessel that you're in, that you're experiencing the world through like a lens. Try to be kind where you can. And slowly releasing any grip out of the hands in the next few breaths. Inhale, halfway lift. You can bend your knees if you wish. Press hands to shins, thighs, or blocks. Peel your heart out long like a back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Two more like that. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. One more time with your own breath and timing. We lower higher than halfway up. We're just trying to extend the spine. When you're done, choose your feet for sun salutations. You might keep them at hips distance, walk the toe mounds together, maybe leave an inch for your heels, maybe heels together, then bend your knees and round up slowly. Drag your head, drag your fingertips. Once you get to the top, you might take a few exhales to roll your shoulders down your back, to stack your head in relative neutral. Sometimes you gotta adjust your shirt or something like that. But once you've done it, see if you can arrive, or maybe before you do it, arrive. Let things be as they are. Start to stack your head in relative neutral over the rest of your body. This is samastitihi, same standing on all sides, to same stand as all. Sama means same, and sitihi is sort of like standing at attention. Sometimes this is translated as standing staunch, like you're uh, in a militaristic perspective. I like to think of it instead as a practice of connection. You're being pulled on by gravity at all times and all directions. Over a millennia, your body has formed these springs and collaborations with gravity and breath. And if we get quiet enough about the other things, you might see them or feel them. Pay attention to the weight shifting and the points of your feet and try to settle them down as much as you can towards neutral. Neutral being an act of attention. We balance the structure of managing ourselves so we don't fall down, right? We're upright with the ease of not doing any work that we don't need to do, figuring out how the ergonomics of our own body work. Suck your head in relative neutral. Do your best to get low, uh, to let go of or get low with a lack of aesthetics, right? Let go of aesthetics as not to look any way. The way it is is of value simply because it is in a connection of things. Then your next inhale, flutter the eyes open if you close them. Next exhale, tune into what's around you. Slowly at first, Surya Namaskara A. Inhale your arms up, reaching upward. Urdhva Hastasana, hands can be shoulder distance so you can press the palms. Exhale, forward fold, bend at your knees if you wish. Dive all the way down, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your heart straight out. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Step or float your feet back, lower halfway or all the way. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, up dog, or choose Cobra, a great friendly alternative. Adho Mukha Svanasana on your exhale, downward facing dog pose, tail high, strong legs without gripping. Soft shoulders and neck, breathe in and out through your nose. 
and study the sense of ground underneath your hands. Exhale, step hop or float forward, land on your feet at the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up pose, Urdhva Hastasana, reach to rise, inflate to stand up. And exhale to Samasitihi, let your arms come down. All right, Akam, first position, inhale, arms up. Due, exhale, second position, hinge at your hips, fold forward. Trini, inhale, third position, and roll your heart straight out. Chitwari, exhale, fourth position, step or float. Chaturanga, Dandasana, Pancha, inhale, fifth position, upward facing dog pose. Shat, exhale, sixth position, downward facing dog pose. Breathing in and out through your nose. You might consider the poses interconnected, interwoven, and networked into the cycle of the sun salutation. And this pose is not really about resting, but perhaps about returning to your breath. Is the breath still with you? Exhale, float forward, land on your feet. Inhale and roll halfway. Exhale, fold forward deeply. Inhale, arms up pose, Urdhva Hasta Asana. Exhale, Samasitihi, return to neutral. Ekam, inhale, arms up. Jue, exhale, fold deeply. Trini, inhale and roll, halfway lift. Chatwari, exhale, step or float. Chaturanga of your choice, pancha, inhale, up dog, or perhaps cobra, shat, exhale, downward dog, ujjayi, pranayama, in and out through the nose. You always have the option to skip chaturangas, right? A hundred push-ups ain't going to make you better, the world better. It might make your shoulders stronger. In some way, it might also just not be worth the suffering. You give yourself a lot of space. To modify, to do it differently, to take a different variation. Give yourself a lot of space to hold plank and head to down dog and just skip it all together. And exhale, step or float to the top of your mat, land on your feet. Inhale and roll straight out. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, arms up pose, Urdhva Hastasana, reaching upward. And exhale, Samastitihi, return to neutral. Ikam, inhale, arms up. Due, exhale, fold over. Trini, inhale, unroll. Chitwari, exhale. Pancha, inhale, up dog. Shad, exhale, down dog. Ujjayi, pranayama, in through the nose, out through the nose, or through the mouth. Exhale, float forward, land on the soles of your feet, inhale, and roll halfway. Supta, exhale, forward fold, Ashtal. Noah, inhale all the way up to Urdhva Hastasana, reaching upward. Exhale, Samastitihi, number 10 is also zero, back to neutral. Ekam, inhale, arms up. Dwe, exhale, folding. Trini, inhale, and roll. Chitwari, exhale. Step or float, pancha, inhale, up dog. Shad, exhale, down dog. Ujjayi, pranayama. You might apply a little tone in the floor of your pelvis. We call it mula bandha. Like gathering the bottom of your body up towards your internal organs a little, nothing extreme. Draw your navel back a little bit. Breathe. Breathe. 
Exhale, step, hop or float forward, land on the soles of your feet, supta. Inhale and roll your heart halfway. Ashto, exhale, forward fold. Noah, inhale all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana, reach up as you press your feet down. Exhale, Samastitihi, back to neutral. Good, very nice. Inhale your arms up, reaching upward. And on your exhale, you're going to flip your uh, left palm up and grab your left hand with your right wrist. So thumb is pointing forward to that. Inhale, stretch up. And exhale, side body bend to the right. Press your pelvis to the left. Make length along the sides of your body. You might even turn your heart a little to the left. Rock your weight into your heels and exhale to drop your tail and your heels downward. Inhale back through center and exhale, flip the grip. Inhale, stretch up and exhale, side body bend to the left. Press your pelvis to the right. A form of Ardha Chandra, the half or crescent moon. Draw the belly back. Press the heels down. Good. Inhale back through center. Exhale, cactus the arms to back bend. Pull your shoulder blades down. Puff out your chest. Perhaps look up if the neck allows. Inhale the arms up, reaching upward. Exhale, forward fold. Dive down. I like to widen my feet out six to eight inches. Padangushtasana. Take two peace sign fingers, wrap them around each big toe. Inhale and roll your heart halfway to set and exhale, folding. Bend your elbows straight away from one another and draw yourself in and down, breathing. You keep your shoulders a little bit integrated into the back of your body. Then when you use your biceps to bend your elbows, you're pulling the whole rib cage down. Work into the lower back and the hips. Always bend the knees as little or as much as is useful to you. Inhale and roll like a halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step back to plank pose and pause. We're going to take side plank with left hand or forearm as the base. Roll to the outside edge of your left foot. I like my forearm down, but you can do it with your hand for sure. Right hand on the hip. You need to stagger one foot in front of the other. You can stack or do a leg variation if you wish. Turn your gaze upward if your neck allows. Five breaths. The Ujjayi form. Good. Back to plank, maybe forearm plank. And let's switch sides so that the right hand or forearm is down, outside edge of right foot. And choose your variation, move in your own timing, and stay for five breaths. Ujjayi pranayama in and out through your nose. Good, forearm plank or plank position. We're going to come all the way down into sphinx. So from palms down, you might do that lowering down action by bending your elbows. You can drop your hips if you're on your forearms. Lift your upper body up. Anchor the tail a little. Draw the belly in. Shrug your shoulders down your back. Take an inhale. And on your exhale, bend your right knee. Squeeze your toes to your tail. Inhale, straighten the right leg, and exhale, bend the left knee, toes to tail, and go back and forth, inhaling to extend, and exhaling to bend. As you do this, notice if your leg wants to lift off the ground or wants to stay down. You can try both, pressing the knee down into the ground even as you squeeze the toes to the tail. Or you can do the action of actively drawing the belly and lifting your leg up and trying to keep your whole thigh up off the ground while you do this. Be mindful with your lower back, which is often a big factor in our feelings of depth. You can do this with the legs also with your upper body down if it feels like too much pressure in your lower back. Let's do a few more rounds on each side following your breath pace. Good. And the next time your left leg lengthens down, use an exhale to slide your hands back under your shoulders, curl your toes under. 
Inhale through plank or table. Exhale back to downward facing dog pose. Take a big deep inhale in through your nose. Open mouth, exhale, each A. Inhale, bend your knees, lift your gaze. Exhale, step or float forward, land on your feet. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your heart. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, arms up, pose, Urdhva Hastasana, reach to rise up. Exhale, Samastitihi, return to neutral. Work through some standing flowing business based on Surya Namaskara B with lunges and squats. Please be kind with your range, kind with your joints. With feet apart or feet together, take a big free inhale in. Exhale, bend your knees and sink your hips for Utkatasana. Inhale your arms out, forward, or up. It can be shoulder distance or maybe the palms will press. And exhale, forward fold, dive over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your spine. Exhale, fold and step your left foot back, long low lunge. All ten toes face forward, high on the ball of your back foot or back knee down. Inhale, rise up, high lunge, crescent lunge. Arms come to frame the face or to an alternative. And on the exhale, return your hands down, step back, chaturanga dandasana or an alternate. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog pose. Inhale your right leg up again behind you, one foot a dog. Exhale, scorpion, open the hip and bend the knee. Inhale, straighten and reach. This time, exhale your right knee towards your nose, your chin towards your chest. Do your best, shoulders over the wrists. Inhale, one foot a dog, reach, extend. Exhale, knee to nose, chin to chest, press with your back heel. Inhale, one foot a dog, reach. Exhale, low lunge, step forward. This time, spin your back heel down if your knee allows it for warrior one. And inhale, arms up, frame the face. On your exhale, flip your left palm up, grab your left wrist, right hand, and pull yourself over to the side, a side body bend towards the right. Inhale, back up through center. And exhale to warrior two, widen out your arms. Spin your back heel wider if you need to. Settle into the breadth of back knee straightening and front knee bending. Flip your right palm up and inhale to reverse your warrior out, up, and back. And exhale your hands to the mat. Listen, spin your back heel up. Inhale, look forward, prepare. Exhale, step forward and fold into your legs. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll. Exhale, fold, bend your knees, Utkatasana, hips low. Inhale, arms forward up, fierce pose. Some folks call it chair. Exhale, forward fold, dive over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold and step your right foot back. All ten toes face forward when you're grounded. Inhale, rise, high lunge, crescent lunge. Anjaneyasana, arms up, reaching upward. And exhale, hands to the earth. Step back to plank pose, chaturanga, or skip it and head to down dog. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, back to land. Inhale your left leg up, one foot at dog. Exhale, scorpion, open the hip and bend the knee. Inhale, straighten and reach. Exhale, knee to nose, chin to chest, shoulders over wrists, best you can. Inhale, one foot at dog, reach and expand. Exhale, knee to nose, chin to chest, curl and round in. Inhale, one foot at dog, reach. Exhale, low lunge. Doesn't have to be quite as long of a step as long as your front knee feels okay. Spin your back heel down and inhale, rise up, warrior one. Flip your right palm up on the exhale, side bend to the left, pulling on the right wrist with the left hand if you wish. Inhale, back up through center. And exhale, warrior two. Spin your back heel wider if you need to. Spread through your arms. Always feel free to take your time, even if you're faster or slower than my pacing. Flip your left palm up. Inhale, reverse your warrior out, up, and back. Lengthen through the left side of your body. And exhale, hands to the earth. Spin your right heel up. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward and fold at the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. 
Exhale, fold, bend your knees, sink your hips, inhale, Utkatasana, arms up, reaching up. This time, on your exhale, let's wrap the right elbow over the left, cross the elbows and the wrists. Your palms might meet, you might interweave your fingers, you might even find the backs of the hands pressing together, grabbing for the shoulders is the right space for you. And then weight in your left heel, inhale your right thigh over your left. You can point your toes, put your foot down on a block next to your left ankle or slide your foot behind your calf. Lift your chest up by engaging your middle back muscles. Stick out your tail. Squeeze the inner thighs by pressing down with your top thigh and up with your bottom thigh. Be kind to balance and wobbles. Take a big free inhale. Relax your jaw. And exhale, release. Two feet down, straighten your knees. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up. Exhale, fold, dive all the way back down. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll. Exhale, fold. Good, and step your left foot way back, long, low lunge. All ten toes face forward. Inhale, high lunge, crescent lunge, Anjane Asana. Arms up, reaching upward. Exhale, cactus the arms to back bend. Pull your shoulder blades into your back. Lift your heart up. Inhale, arms up, reaching upward. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back directly to one-footed dog. Inhale your right leg high and long. Reach it up and back. Exhale, scorpion. Open the hip, bend the knee. You really desperately want to chaturanga dandasana. Go to town instead. <laughs> Inhale, reach, extend your right leg high. Exhale, knee to nose, round your spine. Inhale, tap your knee down onto or towards the mat right below your navel. Exhale, your knee back into your chest. Inhale, one-footed dog, reach. Exhale, low lunge, step forward. Spin your left heel down. Inhale, warrior one, arms up, reaching upward. Exhale, side body bend to the right, pull over like a half moon. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior, flip the palm and reach. Exhale, hands to the mat, spin your back heel up. If you'd like, inhale, standing L or split, kick the sky with your left foot as transition. Exhale, left foot meets the right foot, fold over. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, Utkatasana, bend your knees, sink your hips low, inhale, arms up, reaching upward. Exhale, left elbow over the right, eagle arms of your choice. Weight in your right heel, inhale, left thigh over the right, point wrap, twist tuck, breathe, honor the boundaries of your own bones. There's nothing better about being able to wrap your foot around. Maybe you have really strong hamstrings or calves. That just isn't in your practice. Remember to be you in this moment. That's the value. Take another inhale. Lift your heart up. Squeeze your arms and legs together. And exhale, release. Two feet down. Inhale, circle your arms out and up. Reaching upward, maybe gazing up. Exhale, dive down. Hinge at your hips. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your spine. Exhale, fold. Step your right foot back. Good, inhale, rise. High lunge, crescent lunge, Anjane Asana. Exhale, bend your elbows, drop your shoulders, weight your front heel down. Inhale, arms up, reaching upward. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, one-footed dog. Take your left leg up and back. Exhale, scorpion the dog. Open your hip and bend your knee. Inhale, straighten and reach. Exhale, left knee to nose, chin to chest, shoulders over wrists. Inhale, knee towards mat. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, one foot a dog, reach. Exhale, low lunge. Step your foot forward behind or between your hands. Back heel down. Inhale, warrior one, rise up. Exhale, side bend to the left. Flip your right palm up. Expand your right rib cage. Inhale, back through center. Exhale to warrior two, widen it out. Inhale, reverse your warrior out, up, and back. Expand through the side seam of your body. Exhale, hands to the mat. Spin your back heel up. Option for standing split. Inhale, or look forward and prepare. 
Exhale, two feet down in front of the mat and together, forward folding. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, hips low. Inhale, arms up, Utkatasana, fierce pose. Exhale, hands back by the hips like airplane wings and sit down to super utkatasana. Sometimes widening the feet is better. Super utkatasana means trying to get our top thighs parallel to the floor. Your body might come way down and that's okay. Good. Feel yourself at that parallel, not below, where it might be a little easier for some. Take a big free inhale. And exhale, forward fold, dive over your legs. All right, we're going to do some twisting here. So bend your left knee. Left hand can come down on the earth, inside your foot or on a block. Some of you might work your hand behind your foot. You can bend both knees if you need to, to get yourself a place that feels good. And inhale, take your right arm up, rotate to the right. I like to work my left shoulder to the inside of my left knee. And a lot of that's about folding, which when the hamstrings are soft because the knees are bent, might be a little bit more plausible for some. You're welcome to work on half binding your top right arm behind your back for your inner left thigh. Turn your chin towards your right shoulder. Turn your right shoulder towards your left hip behind you. You're taking a full bind. Feel free. Breathe and revolve your body. And exhale to let it go. Let's inhale, halfway lift through the middle. Hi, Albert. And exhale, fold forward. Bend deeply into your right knee this time. Right hand down on the earth or block. Sometimes also helpful to lift your right heel up. And inhale, take your left arm up and twist to the left. Your left knee might be straight or straightening. Your both knees might be bent. You might work again the same way you did from side to side. You don't have to be quite so uh, symmetrical in that way. You're welcome to full bind if you wish. Revolve your spine. In your desire to twist, don't forget about how much of this pose is really about folding, getting close to your legs to the degree that your body finds its own range of motion. Next couple of exhales, release, hang and forward, fold, inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, squat down, bend your knees, sink your hips for Malasana or Mandukasana, the yoga squat or the frog. You can put a block right direct underneath your hips if you feel like that's a kinder place for your knees, for some of us it is. Sometimes heels lifted or feet wider gives us more room. Every once in a while someone's got a really long Achilles tendon and they can just squat down in parallel and that's also okay if that's you honor that your body is how it is take a big free inhale and exhale forward fold lift your hips hang your head inhale halfway lift unroll your heart straight out exhale fold and step your left foot to the back of your mat long low lunge all right Inhale to high lunge, crescent lunge, Hanjaneyasana, arms up, reaching upward. This time, exhale, circle your hands behind your back and interweave your fingers at your tail. Strengthen your back leg. Inhale, send your knuckles or your elbows back. Arms might be straightening as you lift your heart up. And on your exhale, you're going to fold forward. Don't go so far you can't come back up, as that's what we're going to do. We're going to inhale to lift the chest forward and up, and exhale to lean it down. This might be just a few inches of action. Inhale, lift the heart up, exhale, hinge. One or two more times with your own breath. Next, exhale, release your hands to the mat. Inhale, one foot a dog. Take your right leg high. Exhale, scorpion, open the hip. Inhale, straighten and reach. And exhale, your right knee towards your right elbow, shoulder, the outside of your right arm. Inhale, one foot a dog, extend. Exhale, low lunge, step forward. Left heel down. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, side bend to the right. 
Inhale through warrior one. Let's exhale to warrior two. And this time, extended side angle. So inhale to lean forward. Exhale your elbow to your knee. Your hand could also come down outside onto a block or to hang inside. You're welcome to work on binding. The left arm can go up, or I like to go over in the Ashtanga form. Breathe and press your heels down. Turn and twist your upper body to the left. Keep turning your right thigh bone out to the right. Good. Reverse the warrior. Press into your feet on the exhale. Inhale. Reach your right arm up. Slide your left hand back. And exhale. Hands to the mat. Spin your back heel up. Inhale. Standing L or split. Exhale. Forward fold at the top. Inhale. Halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. All right, we're going to work into a little bit of crow posture, a little bit of balancing work. Don't worry, you've got it. Um, you are welcome to do something else, right? If you're like, oh, I want to do handstands, like go go to town. If you're like, I want to rest, <laughs> that's also equally enlightened. Feel free to go to town. Um, if you're working on crow pose, know that a lot of this is about pressing your legs into your arms and your arms back into your legs. So you're using the front muscles of your body, your abdominals mostly, and also the other seams into your chest and your psoas to really hold you together. So you're looking for samasitihi, for equal pressure from the two things. So don't worry. It's not like you get there and eventually it just is effortless, right? There's always function in the body when we're taking shape like this. As you press into your hands, you'll put them down like you would for chaturanga, maybe a little wider. Make sure your elbows can bend like chaturanga. You can be up on a block even with your feet. You're welcome to come up to your tippy toes and bend your knees. Now, some knees will end up on the backs of the arms, so the elbows. Some of them will come to the backs of the arms armpits. Sometimes it'll be on the outside edge. If you're on the outside, squeeze in with your knees and press out with your arms. If you're on the backs, use the inhales to push forward with your knees and backwards with your arms. And you might come to this point where you're tilting, inhaling forward into your hands and your toes get light, in which you might lift them up. And I'm still pushing my knees into my arms and pressing my arms backwards into my knees. If that works out, toes to tail. You might go back and forth inhaling to shift weight into your hands and exhaling to shift into your feet. Give it a couple of good college tries. Worst that can happen is we kind of fall pretty close to the ground. <laughs> Doc has been sleeping in her sleeping bag. Pull it off of her. Give yourself a few more tries, inhaling and exhaling into crow pose. When you're ready, we'll meet in another squatting position for about three or four rounds of breath. And when you're ready to be done with squatting, use an inhale to lift the hips. And exhale to hang and forward fold over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your spine. Exhale, fold and step your right foot back, long low lunge. Inhale, high lunge, crescent lunge, Anjaneyasana, arms up, reaching up. Again, exhale, cactus arm back bend, bend your elbows, pull your shoulders down, and keep circling around to interweave your fingers behind you with your tail. You might take the non-dominant grip. Inhale, pull through the arms, lift through the heart. Exhale, hinge forward from your abdominals, from your low spine to hang over your thigh. Inhale, use your arms pulling you back to lift your chest up. And exhale to lean forward. A few more like this. And the next time you're coming down, release your hands to frame your front foot and inhale one footed dog. Take your left leg high and long. Exhale, scorpion dog, open the hip and bend the knee. Inhale, straighten and reach. Exhale, left knee towards left elbow or shoulder on the outside edge, shoulders over the wrists. Inhale, one foot a dog. Exhale, low lunge, step your foot through, spin your right heel down. Inhale, warrior one, rise up. Exhale, side body bend to the left, 
root your feet down. Inhale back through center. Exhale to warrior two. A little tricky this time. Inhale, straighten your left leg, turn your toes in. Exhale, prasarita padottanasana, the wide-footed fold. Hands can come to the earth or blocks. Then bend your knees if it's kind to your hamstrings. But straightening the legs means really plugging your heels down. So whether your knee is bent or straight externally, straightening is an action. Press your feet down, stick your tail up, tuck your chin, bring the crown of your head towards the earth, and if that works out, you can get all the way through the line of your legs and try to look up underneath. Engage your quads and inner thighs a little, even if you don't need to, to draw your knees towards straight. Inhale and roll like a halfway lift. And exhale, hands on your hips. Inhale, stands you the rest of the way up. And exhale, warrior two. Spin your left toes forward, reach through your arms, inhale. Exhale, side angle. So elbow could come to knee, your hand to a block, inside or outside of the foot. Right arm can go up or over. And you're always welcome to work on binding, etc. There are different versions you want to do. I like to stay up a little so that I'm working on being strong in my legs and in my belly. But you might like the compression of resting your body on your thigh. Just notice it's good to have all the cards in your deck to figure Figure out how all the options can be part of your connected network of unattached self. Good. As you press into your heels and the exhale, inhale, let's reverse the warrior out, up, and back with the left arm long through the left side. And exhale, hands to the mat, spin your right heel up. Inhale, standing L or split as an option for transition. Exhale, two feet down and together forward, fold. Good. Inhale. Halfway lift. Exhale. Chaturanga. Plant your hands and step or float back. Lower halfway or all the way. Inhale. Upward dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog pose. All right. Inhale. Look forward. Exhale. Step or float to the top of your mat. Inhale. Halfway lift. And exhale, yogi squat. So widen your feet in a turn and face you this way so you can see this action. Sink your hips down. You can plant your hands down and just step your left foot back for a lizard. Come down onto your left knee. You can definitely pat it if you'd like. Now, for today's lizard, often we sort of turn way out, and you're welcome to do it that way if you wish. We might keep it a little more hugged in. So keep your leg close to your body, but you can turn the thigh bone and the foot out if you wish. And you might walk it more forward and then come down to the hands. Or if you like, use a block and try to start to work your right shoulder behind your right knee. So start by taking your hand underneath and behind your calf. You can put it down on the outside edge. You might work your shoulder beneath. Start to turn to the right with your face, your gaze. Your chin might come towards your shin. You might bring your head behind your leg. Once you get to this place, if you like staying down on the back knee, feel free. Otherwise, curl your toes under and lift your leg up. Strong in your back leg. That height of the back leg might give you more room to fold down. Don't fret if you don't get very far behind your own knee. It's just a way of using the boundaries of the body to breathe and notice. Good. Let's get on out of there. Inhale, look forward and exhale, step your left foot up around your left hand and come back to the squat. Take a big free inhale. Exhale, weight in the hand, step your right foot way back, and drop your right knee down to start. Take your left hand and go behind your left foot, behind your shin and calf there, and walk your hand out to the outside edge of your foot. Once you get your hand underneath and behind the outside edge, you might stay upright. You might use a block. I like to curl my back toes under and lift my back knee up. I have more room. Bring your chin towards your shin. Start to look to the left. Maybe slide your uh, body more underneath your thigh. The more lifted you stay on the back leg, the more room you have to sort of slither under. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's get out of there <laughs> on the exhale. Inhale, look forward, and exhale, step up with your right foot into your squat. All right, take a moment, inhale, and on your exhale, I'm gonna come all the way down to a seat. We're gonna do a couple rounds of boat pose in scale. If you know it and wanna do it your own way, feel free. Otherwise, I need to kind of pull the flesh out from underneath me so the bony parts of my butt are still uh, findable. And then I wanna figure out if I'm gonna balance a little behind of them or a little in front of them, which is different from body to body. Keep your feet on the ground, feet hips distance at first, and bring your hands behind your knees with your thumbs up and spin your elbows out to drop your shoulders down. Lift your chest up and just lean back. Lean back until you feel a desire to round or until you feel your abdominal muscles start to really engage. And then you might float your toes off the ground. This is option one, either here, arms out long, breathing. Try to keep tall in your chest. Five breaths. Feel the golden light of strength coming from your navel. Your connected, creative strength coming from your low belly, an orange glow. The pure, connected green of your heart. Good, and exhale, put your feet down. Take an inhale to lift your chest up. And on your exhale, if you'd like, you can hug your knees and round in. Good, inhale, lift your heart up, grab behind your knees, and exhale, lean back. So you might repeat option one, or even keep your feet on the ground. Option two is to start to bring the shins more parallel with the arms out, or hands can come to the ground in a different way if it supports you. You might also work your knees together in this variation and see if it changes anything, breathing. Five breaths. Good. Put your feet down. Take another inhale. Lift your heart up. And exhale. You could round again if you like. Maybe opposite arm on top. And inhale to lift up through the chest. And exhale. Grab behind the knees. Widen the elbows. Inhale. Lean back. You might stay right there. You might work the first variation, the second variation. You might head to the third variation, straightening your legs, <laughs> arms out. Let the shoulders drop down and breathe. Just a few more rounds of breath. And release your feet down. Draw the soles of your feet together and your knees wide for Baddha Konasana. And grab the flesh underneath you and roll it back. Or you can sit up on the edge of rolled up mat or a blanket or a towel or a block. Take an inhale to lift your heart tall and exhale to fold forward over your legs. When you can fold no further, drop the weight of your head and breathe. And slowly round your spine up. Take your left leg out long in front of you. So you can choose the option of Janyashirshasana, bringing the sole of your right foot to your inner thigh. You can side bend or fold towards your left leg. I'm also going to suggest Chiyang Mukha Paschimottanasana, the Ekapada form where you fold one leg back like this, a quad stretch and roll your calf up. You might sit up on a block if it's a lot of pressure in the knees, but if you're just a little tilted to the left, ain't nothing wrong with you. You'll work your right hip down over time, many years maybe. Either of these postures, you're welcome to fold forward towards your front leg. Take an inhale and exhale to fold down. Know that if it's awkward, you're not alone. Inhale. 
And exhale, release your pose. You might roll to the outside edge of your left hip to release your right leg. And again, you might choose to fold your left knee and take Janya Shirshasana. Let the knee turn out. That's an option. Or you could roll to the outside edge of your right hip and take Akapada Triyong Mukha Paschimottanasana. Uh, that's a lot of Sanskrit words. It really means one-legged. Fold your knee like this pose. <laughs> you can fold forward over your right leg. Inhale and exhale. Fold. Breathing. Good. Take a long inhale and exhale. Release. Bring both legs out long. And let's do a, a front body stretch together, the east-facing stretch, Purvutanasana, a different than west stretch, the forward fold. So we stretch the front of our body with the east stretch, a little like flash dance. There's a couple variations. Bring your hands back behind you six to eight inches, about shoulder distance apart, fingers point forward, or maybe out with the thumbs forward. I don't suggest facing fingers back, but if you love it and you know it's best, do it. You can bend your knees and put the soles of your feet and take the reverse table, inhaling to lift your hips up. You can also choose to take your legs out long. Whatever variation you're choosing, start to prepare for it and use an inhale to enter in. You might hang the head back, the neck allows, gaze down the line of your nose so your eyes don't roll back in your head and breathe. On your exhale, set your hips down. Inhale to reach your arms up or to reach for your feet. And exhale to fold over your legs. The West Stretch, Paschimottanasana. Beginning with an exhale to release any grip. Use an inhale to roll yourself up, drag your head. You might have to scooch forward on your mat, but just continue to roll down onto your back. And once you're all the way down on the back of your body, hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. You can rock from side to side if you wish. I'm going to open up the floor to finishing actions as yogi's choice. So you might twist or backbend. You might choose to do a safe inversion. Legs up the wall, hips on a block, supported bridge. Flower shoulder stand if it's in your practice. You might not need much. It might just be time to settle down now. Remember, you have the magic power of the pause button. You can always take extra time if you'd like and meet back up with us. When you're ready to settle into rest, let's take five or ten rounds of breath to really settle down. Often we rest in Shavasana on the back with the arms and legs long, which are always welcome to bend the knees and put the soles of the feet on the mat. Sometimes this allows the lower back curve to soften if you're feeling pressure there. Or to choose the goddess or the Bhattakanasana form with feet together as I'm practicing right now. You could bring yourself onto your side or onto your belly or up into a seat or to lean against a wall or move over to a comfortable chair or bed if you like. Rest your hands on your belly or let your arms hang by your sides. And take a moment if there's any less fidgets or wiggles that you need to get the fidgets out and then to settle down into relative neutral. We'll rest in this way for a few minutes, and when the time comes to return to action, I'll call you up and out. Until then, take a moment to notice any tension patterns left over in the face, in the jaw, the viscera of the belly, the hands, the feet, the pelvis, and the chest, the throat. See if you can ask these uh, spaces just to continually move towards softness. Even if you realize you're holding your back teeth, as soon as you realize, let them soften away from one another. Close the eyes if it's available or look at one spot in the sky or the ceiling. When time comes to return to action, I'll chant you up and out. Until then, pay attention to the truth of how things really are.
Asti praja bhyaya paripalayantam nyayena margena mahimahishaha go brahmanye bhyaya shubhamastu nityam Loka samasta sukhinom bhavantu Om shanti 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 If you're lying in rest and wish to remain, have the availability to do so, please do. The time has come for you to begin to return to the sway of things. Begin to slowly go to your breath and ask it to deepen, rise towards your awareness, to breathe on purpose again. And as you start to breathe on purpose again, you might start to notice that your body uh, moves. You rise and fall, the ribs, the belly. You can ride that into any kind of movement of waking you like in your own stream of uh, timing. You might wiggle your fingers and toes. You might scrunch and spread your facial muscles, run your tongue over your teeth, stretch out and up like rising from a nap. When you're ready over the next five or six slow rounds of moving and breathing, you can use an exhale to gather your knees into your chest and roll onto your favorite side. You might roll to the left for reflective lunar quality in this time or roll to the right for responsive solar quality in this time. Take a few breaths there to acknowledge your process, to acknowledge that you don't do this in a vacuum, right? That whoever you are, however you're practicing, that this practice came to us from India, right? And that came here through a vast colonial, imperialistic, and racist system. So continue to consider the great gratitude and care in which you utilize this liberation practice. Consider how you can use it to help liberate yourself so you can liberate others. Consider the land that you're on and the people that belong to that land. Here I'm on Salish, Swinomish land. You might consider um, your own ancestry, what came before. You might consider the privileges, the gifts, the things that allow you to do the practice. You might also practice gratitude for the obstacles and difficulties to your practice or to the access of the practice. Consider first and foremost, of course, your community and yourself, the fact that you're willing to turn again and again towards this practice of peace and truth, love and kindness. When you're ready, use your top hand to press yourself up towards a tall seat and we'll seal in our work together. As you do that chant, I chant it as a traditional closing chant in the lineage of Krishmanacharya uh, from which Vinyasa Yoga comes in Gokulam, Mysore in the south of India. The overarching meaning of that chant is, uh, may there be victory to the energy that creates. May the noble practitioners here, leaders, be blessed, and may their work be effective and cultivate abundance. And may our work seek to contribute to the happiness and liberation of all beings everywhere inside of this context of universality, non-dualism, and peace. For going to enlightenment, we all have to go together. If you wish, you can fold your hands in the prayer position, the Anjali Mudra, symbolizing the meeting place between all things that seem disparate or opposite, sun and moon, left and right, beginning and end. It's a place where they become one, that we acknowledge our connection to all. Thank you for your time, your energy, your work. If you wish, you can bring thumbs to the third eye center, the place of connection with what is higher, and let it bow to the connection that lies in the heart. If you wish, you can bow to yourself, seal in your practice. Thank you for practicing. You can donate directly to the Minnesota Healing Justice Network. Their PayPal is right here direct. If you donate to me, I'll send uh, donations at the end of the week with a thank you from the posers community. Um, if you have questions, concerns, need to give me feedback, need to say like your dog's nose is super distracting in the shot, feel free to reach out and let me know. Otherwise, um, know that whatever you're going through is valid. If it's a hard day, it's a hard day. I see you, even from this different time and this different distance. That you're allowed to go through what you're going through. Right? It doesn't always have to be fast. You don't always have to be perfect. And in fact, your imperfection is welcome in this practice and welcome in this community. Thank you for letting me be a part of your work, part of your process. If you need me, reach out. Otherwise, sending love from distance, uh, solidarity uh, with protesters and the Chop and Chaz, solidarity with those who are speaking out for their rights, solidarity with black lives, black joy, black uh, elegance and wonder. Have a great week. Love to you all.